In this video, I will be talking about some of the main functions that you'll be using throughout the semester and how to use them. These are some of the most frequent functions you will be using. I'll go over more in depth into these later in the video. This is the Arduino's interface where you, you can write and compile your own code to the Arduino. When you start a sketch with Arduino, the first thing you need to do is put two main functions in your code called void setup and void loop. You will always start with these two functions. Everything you put inside void setup will run once. Everything you put in void loop will run continuously in a loop. When you use a pin on the Arduino, you must let the Arduino know by calling the function pin mode. Pin mode takes two parameters. The first parameter is the pin number you will be using. The second is whether you're going to be using that pin as an output or an input. I will be flashing the built-in LED off and on on pin 13. So I need to list this as an output. If I were reading a button or sensor, then this would be an input instead. Now that we have a pin initialized as an output, I need to send a voltage to this pin. You can do this by calling the function digital write. Digital write takes two parameters, the pin number you want to control and whether you're sending five volts or not. You indicate five volts by putting high as the second parameter. I want the built-in LED on pin 13 to stay on for one second so I'm going to delay the Arduino for one second with the delay function. The delay function reads as input in milliseconds, so I must put 1000 to indicate one second. I also want to send zero volts to the pin I'm working with. You do this by calling digital write and putting low as its second parameter. I want the LED to stay off for one second before it turns high, so I will delay the Arduino for one second. That's it. Let's see how the code affects the Arduino. As you can see here, the Arduino is turning on its light on pin 13 for one second and then turning the light off for one second. And like I showed in the last tutorial, I could unplug this and put a battery in instead and it would still read the same code. Now I will explain about the analog write function. The analog write takes two parameters, the pin number you're using this function for and the values you want to send to the pin. The minimum value for analog write is 0 and the max is 255. This is because the pins you use analog write on receive 8 bits of information. The values you are putting in in the second parameter of the function can be thought of as varying voltages where 5 volts is to 255 as 0 volts is to 0 while everything else scales proportionally in between. So if I put 127 in the second parameter, the voltage would nearly be 3.5 volts going into pin 11. You need to be careful when choosing a pin for analog write because if you're going to be using voltages between 5 and 0 volts, you need to use the pins that support pulse width modulation. You may use the digital write function on pins that have pulse width modulation but you cannot use analog write functions for pins that don't support pulse width modulation. This sketch is turning pin 11 on 5 volts, waiting for a second, then turning pin 11 to about 3.5 volts, and then waiting for another second, and then turning the voltage on pin 11 to zero. Notice how I set up the circuit I used a resistor, and I used a resistor because if I didn't, I would be at risk at burning out my LED. This is a 220 ohm resistor. My circuit here is going from pin 11 to the resistor, going through the resistor, and connecting to the anode of the LED, which is the longer end, going through, comes out of the cathode and goes into this black wire to the power strip to ground on the other side. The reason why I used a 220 ohm resistor is because of Ohm's law. 
and what that states is V equals I times R. In other words, voltage equals current times resistance. This LED can only take about 25 milliamps, maybe 30 milliamps. And so how I figure out the current going to this LED is if I divide the voltage by the resistance. Because this is 220 ohms and this board is supplying 5 volts, if you divide 5 by 220, you get 0.022 amps. Or in other words, that would be 22 milliamps. So we know that this is safe to put into our LED. That wraps it up for this tutorial. In the next video, I'll show you analog and digital read and how to use them in Arduino. And I'll show you how to be hooking up sensors to a breadboard and how to get your Arduino to read those sensors.